everybody and welcome back to Feedback Loop. I'm Joey. And I'm Jeremy. And this past week we were kind of thrust into an album that I picked. <laughs> I, I, I picked it on a whim and I think I may have unleashed a beast. But the album that we were listening to was Songs from Under the Sink by Mischief Brew. Uh, it's kind of a, I, I don't want to say a full folk punk album or anything, kind of also punk rock, but uh, it's in that style. And sure. it's it's a style of music that I listen to a lot of, and Jeremy doesn't have <laughs> too much. I, I don't know if he's ever dipped his toe too much into it, so we're doing it. We're just fucking jumping in there, man. Yeah, I've I've definitely not. This is one of the, one of the first notes that I had on this album is that yeah, it's definitely quote unquote Joey music to me because this is, this is the kind of stuff that I think about when I think of you know back in the day and like the pizza place you'd, you'd play music that i just couldn't stand uh so and that, this was for this album kind of see i don't think i ever played this band specifically but oh, right, uh, right eric peterson the head guy songwriter singer mm-hmm. a guitar player also uh he was also in a punk band called the orphans and they have a song for an old kentucky anarchist that i think i played quite a few times while sweeping at uh, said pizza place. <laughs> it is definitely possible. So I, I I don't know whether I should be upset with you for exposing me to such music or to just run outside and shout, thanks, bastards, at the government because I've, I've been completely engrossed in this punk thing. But uh, we'll, we'll, f- we'll figure out which, which way I need to go, I suppose, yeah. after we talk about track number one. Thanks, bastards. Thanks, bastards. <laughs> okay, so I mean, I think I have a pretty good idea of how you feel about this, just from but, what I've already said. But lay it on me. <laughs> so, so bullet point A: the first time I heard this song, I fucking hated it. <laughs> it, oh. it, it. It starts with some simple guitar. The vocals come in immediately, and this is Joey music, as, as I kind of already noted. It's kind of a bedroomy, folksy kind of punk thing, but the singer's voice. He, he makes his voice rough for that kind of punk feel at points and a lot of points throughout this album. And I really don't like it. I, I don't like his voice. It does kind of remind me of some other bands that I like more like Flogging Molly, which I, I've never really like dove into Flogging Molly either. But it, it's kind of in that same vein for me. And that gives it some sort of like, I guess, secondhand joy because like I, I do enjoy what I've heard from Flogging Molly and like even even Rancid kind of has some some similar ish stuff, yeah. not nearly as folksy, but th- that's kind of where my, my mind was for this stuff. So it wasn't the worst. I don't think this this album slash band will ever be my cup of tea, though. Um, it's got some high piano stuff. It's got some like mandolin and shit that splash into the song and throughout this album, the mandolin's just lovely. I, I I do really enjoy it. Just add add adds a little character to the album, but yeah, it's it's not my not my style. Yeah, I his vocals like so. I haven't listened to this album. I I did listen to it once, like recently, right before I picked it, and I think that's the reason why it was in my like on my mind. Yeah, but I do remember like his voice. He sounds kind of like a pirate or something sometimes, yeah, like yeah, an Irish pirate. I literally, in the second, the in, in my notes for track two, I put, this guy's voice is definitely going to get on my nerves. It's so <laughs> dramatic and sounds like he's trying to be an 80s cartoon villain or maybe a kid trying to sound like a pirate. So that, that's I definitely like where I don't, I cannot stand it. It drives me fucking crazy. Well, that's uh, at least <laughs> a, good, a good thing to think about when I'm... Uh, determining next week's album yeah yeah i have two albums in mind and depending on how this goes it's going to go one of two ways neither of which i think you're going to love love but, yeah i mean but, uh, this this isn't this isn't a bad thing you know it's, it's good to be exposed to things you don't like right and it's yeah. it's it's maybe we'll find something in there that I, I that i do like and maybe two years from now when your tastes have changed a little bit maybe you'll be like ah maybe not about this mischief brew in particular, but something right. you'll be like, huh? Maybe, maybe I, I could. I don't hate uh, it. Maybe I could palette that song now. Exactly. But, uh, <laughs> exactly. It's all. I mean, again, the point of this podcast is that we're we're trying to try to push each other's boundaries a little bit and try to discover things that we wouldn't normally discover. And this well, is definitely something that I would not normally discover, <laughs> for better or worse. 
Oh, man. Uh, speaking of pushing boundaries, <laughs> there's a lot of uh, rebellion talk on this album. And... Yeah, so much so that I would argue it is not pushing the boundaries of punk music. <laughs> <laughs> well, so okay, so this was, I mean, not saying, this album came out in 2006. Uh-huh. It's not, which is not at all the advent of punk by right. any means. Like, right. this railing against the government has essentially been since since there's since there been was people, government yeah. So, yeah since there's been authority there's always been people going against it yeah. but this is just uh it's more of that it's more in a diy type of i guess package yeah like it's when you think of punk you think of like crunchy guitars fast paced what it like cr- like I don't know. Punk rock is typically what I think of, or I feel like most people would think of whenever you think of punk. And this is acoustic guitars where it's, where it is electric guitars. They're usually clean, not a lot of like distortion. Like you said, there's like mandolin and stuff like that. It's, it's more folksy and punk, hence the folk punk moniker. And I, I like that more than I like punk rock. I think at this point in my life, but yeah, yeah, that's interesting. I, I think I would tend to prefer more punk rock stuff, but I like the feeling of you just found a guy in the woods with a guitar <laughs> and like he's just like ah, Thanks, <laughs> bastards. <laughs> exactly. I think I think that's where you and I just don't see eye to eye because I feel like it's just I don't, I don't know. So like yeah, this song it's a punk song about anarchy, right? Nothing totally shocking there, but but really the song's about like blaming government and and police forces for the deaths of innocent people which is 100 percent valid but i i don't know this is where me and anarchists in general don't see eye to eye i I feel like anarchy doesn't solve that problem It, it doesn't like make anything better and it kind of yes it empowers people but maybe it empowers people a bit too much to the point where anybody can can and will kill anybody else for little reason. And the only way to stop someone from killing is to kill them. And it's, it, it doesn't really solve the issue. I don't think. See, okay. So this is going to be part of the journey that we may potentially go on at a certain point, because there is an artist out there who I feel like came full, like not full circle, but like you can watch this person grow as right. they're, as as you hear their later albums and stuff not not eric peterson uh but it's it's somebody that we potentially may be listening to their more raw stuff next week but um yeah it's i semi agree like a lot of the anarchy kind of playbook the the dream is that it will come to a point where not that like you overthrow the government and it's complete and total like chaos, but I right. mean, it's just people... that, that people would mind their own business and, and they would govern themselves. Yeah. And that would be great. That would be absolutely amazing. That would be a good utopia. <laughs> yeah. But that's, yeah, that's what it kind of is. But I do like the speaking truth to power. I like the fuck. I am very much like against authority yeah and that like because in i don't know there's just parts of this song that seem very cyclical like i said this album was released in 2006 the songs were recorded between 1997 and 2002 so they're Mm -hmm. even older than that some of these songs are 25 years old there's a line in here for every time you sign your name someone out there dies found a wallet not a gun and mother's wiping tears from her eyes and yeah like that's speaking on police officers who are too fucking trigger happy whenever they see somebody reach for a wallet after they've asked for identification they're just I like go, oh, he's... i would go a step further and say that it's more about the corruption and the money of of getting a police force going you know yeah you those police people are cashing checks from the government and they they have to prove their worth by going out and finding crimes that maybe aren't actually crimes yes just yes. so that they keep getting paid kind of a thing that's where that's where my mind kind of took that that kind of line and and that line of thinking is that it's more about like not necessarily that the person was just innocent which they were but more of the like that they don't give a shit that that's not they don't care about that they're they're there because they're collecting a paycheck they're trying to prove their worth they're getting paid to do something and if there's no crime then they have to make some up 
in order to to justify it. A cough, cough, war on drugs, cough, cough. Which <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> is something that, that, I mean, a band that we both love, System of a Down, like the yeah. prison song becomes very relevant by the end of this this album. And, and yes. I, there, there's kind of a similar message, which again, I'm not I'm not totally against, right? I, there are a lot of topics on this album that I do agree with, but I don't know. I don't know. Just like this style of punk and this anarchy and, and this thing, the whole feeling of it kind of comes off as naive or immature to me yeah. a lot of times where it just seems like you know some teenager took a u.s history class and hyper fixated on like authority bad and and didn't really put any thought into like how society exists as it is and how it would exist in their dream state when it's kind of like it's kind of like this this jigalak versus shagorth kind of thing yeah between chaos and order there has to be some sort of balance and it can't be the two extremes. It's got to right. be down. And I do, I agree with it. There is, there's a lot of idealization that goes into <laughs> not only this, uh, this album, but just yeah. music in this similar vein or just thoughts in this similar vein. Uh, but I feel like at least the way that I take it is that it is extreme. Yes. But there's a lot of stuff that's extreme. And me hearing this, I didn't, want to go out and smash the windows of the right. oppressive businesses. And I feel like it's got to be extreme to catch people's attention to g- then get them thinking it's, it tries to like make a healthy distrust of authority, a healthy questioning of who's actually in power and what they're doing. And is it actually in our best interest? Because there's a lot of people like we, all of the people here, We pay taxes to the government, Mm -hmm. essentially, to work for us, but so often it's running directly against us in our worst interest, and their whole deal is puppet mastering people being, like, continuing to keep them in power, but still taking, sucking the people dry at the same time, and even killing the the people. Yeah, I mean, and it's it's super topical in the the last year, with Black Lives Matter movement becoming so prevalent in in media and and everything, because they are throwing riots. They've reached a point where it's like, look, quiet protest, peaceful protest, clearly isn't doing shit. So we're we're gonna kick it up a notch. I, I don't necessarily disagree with even riots, for, for things like that. Like it, it has its place. I just, I don't know. It, it comes off to me as oversimplification, I suppose when yeah. a lot of these punk artists are singing, which I mean, to your point, it, it could be knowing it, it could be self-aware and, and kind of being extreme just to like, to, I, I don't know, hyperbolize things, right? Because it's, it's storytelling. It's, it's songwriting. And a lot of that's in any genre, you, you'll get that to some, to some extent, but I don't know. It just, it feels flat to me. It yeah. feels shallow, I suppose. And last, I guess, point before we move on, uh, I feel like another reason why it's so hyperbolized is because nobody's going to get out there and fucking right. protest, start throwing bricks through windows if they're not told a story. Like, you got to tell me a story that's going to get me pissed off to get me out on the streets. And yeah, you got to find a reason. Kinda, yeah, but that's just kind of where... My two cents. For, <laughs> two, for two cents for track number two. Tell me a story. <laughs> That's I, a good segue. I, yeah, there we go. It, yeah. I liked it. Cool. And <laughs> you kind of you kind of told me a story as you were, <laughs> were going through it. Uh, but Didn't yeah, quite know where it was going to go, but it, so, it happened. So, <laughs> this one it, it has kind of that that one eared intro thing going on that we we have talked down upon in in the past. It it kind of goes on a little bit too long for me. But it does kind of accent. It has a, a good effect because the drums and the bass and the stereo guitar comes in and it gives it a more full feeling. So, like, I, I, I understand it. I still think it was kind of maybe it went on too long. Um, like I said, the guy's voice, not not doing it for me. I'm going to try to stop repeating myself because it's it, 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 I'm, I don't, I'm not old man screaming at this guy over and over again. But uh, yeah, musically, I, I do like the progression of this track more. There's drums, which are missing on a lot of the, the album for me, uh, which kind of makes this the song stand out a little bit in the musical vein. Yeah, it's kind of like, I think a lot of these was were just like him recording by himself. 
Yeah. And maybe like one other person sometimes, which I do like on this song. Like there's bass that gets mm-hmm. a kind of a cool groovy line around like two minutes. And uh, it's this one's kind of always given me the same vibe that I get from like the Dropkick Murphys. Yeah. Uh, except, I guess, less punk rock and more more folkier punk, I guess. Yeah. But, you know, I, I just like his voice. I'm going to throw that out there every time you say <laughs> you don't like his voice. I'm going to say I do like his voice. And normally I would... Uh, it just, it just feels hokey to me like because he, he's very clearly doing it. And I've thought about this enough that like I I recognize that in metal it's it's a common thing like people will do growling and screaming and stuff to to drive home a point and stuff and I don't bat an eye at it but here in the scenario I'm complaining about it because <laughs> I, don't, I don't know it just it doesn't I don't know I don't like the sound of it yeah and I think it's I, as simple as that I think it's valid like I mean of course it's valid you said it you feel it but <laughs> like I can un- I can completely understand that that point because uh there whenever i first heard it there's not necessarily this song but a a song a little bit later i almost kind of winced not quite cringed but whenever i would hear the song i'd be like eh like i it it kind of seems a little too edgy i guess (laughs) yeah uh, (laughs) and that's that's the thing like again like like i said a lot of this album and and just punk in this vein and and anarchist it feels kind of immature and that like i'm i'm it feels like someone younger trying to play it up to seem cool without actually like without having that feeling i suppose i don't know i will say this this album this whole genre hits different like i used to drive around in my shitty 1993 (laughs) honda civic looking for trying to scrounge for quarters to buy cigarettes in my car (laughs) and uh listen to stuff like this and just scream it and now i drive in my my car with heated seats and i can connect (laughs) my phone via bluetooth to the radio and i i I listen to folk punk and i'm like god i'm so fucking out of touch (laughs) (laughs) who am i (laughs) I'm not that young man anymore. I'm not angry at the world as much. <laughs> I'm still angry at the world. It's just seeded into some sort of depression where I just slowly <laughs> rot at my desk all day. And I'm like, yeah, uh, whatever. You, you've, you're hitting the point of gray, and yeah, not, not I, the green. Yeah, exactly. I, I have accepted <laughs> that I'm going to die. It's just how slow is it going to happen at this point? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's track number two. Uh, lyrically, the, the song's about warmongering. And how mm-hmm. history is written by the victors, which I definitely don't disagree with. I, I'm I'm all about anti-war messaging, more so than complete anti-government. anarchy and anti-government kind of stuff. Uh, but I don't know; it, it still felt a little cliche. Yeah, I mean, it. This a lot of this was written right before 2001 or right after like yeah. 9/11, when it was like peak patriotism as a puppeteering method to get people to sign up to go over to Afghanistan. Like there's yeah. very much an us versus them mentality. And that's kind of what the song talks about. Like the manipulative patriotism that can be used to incite distrust in another race or country, and then be used to justify starting a war where there necess- shouldn't necessarily be one, like whether or not you think we need to go over and, Metal and others care. affairs. Yeah, like that's one thing, but then to full on send body after body over there to just do I mean, this is this is coming out right now where we just pulled out of Afghanistan and now fucking Right. Pe- like it's already a shit show. Be- yeah. And it's a shit sh- like it nothing happened. Being on the tail end of what was started around the time of this song and nothing's changed. Just <laughs> right. a lot of people a lot died. of innocent, decent people died, and that's kind of where we're at. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And if the politicians really are riling up the everyday people to sign their lives away, to fight a war for them in the name of their own self interest, and that's where, like, the disgust comes from. It's fucked up. It is very I, fucked up. I agree with the anger, the rage against the machine in this case. <laughs> I do, I, I will say, there, there was a, a section of the song that, that I called out lyrically. 
Uh, he says, the first thing I remember waking up and seeing you there, comfort like a fire, like an answer to a prayer, like a beacon in the blackness, uh, which I, I don't know. I, I like that just because it's clearly like the hero coming in and saving the day being yeah. American politicians or whatever. But it, I, I wasn't sure if it was intentional, but he says comfort like a fire. And to me, that was like, okay, that's a very clever way of saying that like it's warm and it's agreeable at a certain distance. But if you get too close, it's just going to, it's going to burn you. It's going to cause discomfort and damage. Yeah. And oh boy, will it, I, I do like a lot, like his lyricism, uh, as sometimes edgy as it can get. Yeah. I, I think, I don't know if it's just, I'm not going to apologize for liking it, but oh, I sure. do. It's, uh, I feel like he's definitely got some gems in there. I, agree. There's, I, I don't there's, hate this album lyrically, most mostly. There there are a couple of sections <laughs> that I'll complain about later. But. Make sure to point them out, please. <laughs> I will. <laughs> uh, but in the meantime, give me coffee or give me death because I will not take anything in between. Well, I will give you coffee because I'm not killing you. Oh, shit. Okay. But I'm, but I'm not actually going to give you coffee. But I will give you my thoughts on track number three. Give Which me coffee is- or death. Yeah, there we go. The start of the coffee duology on this duology. album. Duology. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, this, I mean, I guess people people just like coffee and it's topical yeah. and it's easy to sing about. I mean, I think it's like the idea that like he, a lot of the younger, poorer people who are like in the scene of like rebellion are not eating. They're just fueled by coffee and cigarettes and just like fucking out there starving and they go to protest with hunger. Are you, in their are you bellies. implying that coffee is a poor man's drink? <laughs> no, it's just like, it keeps you awake whenever your body is wanting actual sustenance, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should try drinking coffee more. Yeah. Boy, I feel like death all the time. Well, it's not going to help that, but it'll maybe make you move quicker a little bit. <laughs> so. but yeah, this one, it's got some, some sloppy quick uh, acoustic strumming that introduces a simple alternate bass line, kind of given a, given this kind of bluegrassy southern kind of feel to it, this yeehaw feel to it. Yeah, it's definitely got that bounce, like the yeah. yeah the kind of forward bounce that a lot of folky, which I mean, it is folk punk, folk and bluegrass kind of at least yeah. in the American sense go to get, go kind of hand in hand. So I agree, but it's uh yeah, like music wise. You're going to hear just a couple of sounds really on this album Mm -hmm. and it's not going to really break too many barriers. There's not anything too experimental with the music here. It's kind of, it doesn't need to be. It's it's kind of like a roots kind of, yeah, it's, it's just raw. It's pure, right? It's not, it's not trying to be overproduced because that would kind of go against the punk messaging, right? I don't know. There's some uh, there's some punk out there that's pretty produced. Yeah, and I tend to like it. I mean, last, <laughs> last week we talked about Every Time I Die, which is kind of like a, a hardcore metal with, with some punk splashed in there that I, I think it benefited from having a very clean sound to it. And you like Paramore. Aren't they, aren't they punky? Aren't they punky? Not really. Oh, they're that's, not that's okay. A, that's a discussion for another time. <laughs> okay, because I mean, I'm I'm genuinely asking. I'm not they, trying to poke fun at they, anything. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. I was not taking it in an offensive way at all. But the, I I would classify one, maybe two of their albums as pop punk. Okay, but it's it's like the Blink One Eighty Two kind of kind of style of pop punk. Okay, so, I like Blink One Eighty Two. Don't yeah, at me. I'm just saying. I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily agree that it's punk music. Yeah. <laughs> Haley Williams, discuss whether or not it's punk, please. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she has several thoughts yeah. on her old music and her new music, but well, uh, that, that's well, not here. Yeah. We'll, but, uh, we'll get there at some someday. Yeah. So music-wise, it's kind of, yeah, it's got, like you said, this kind of bluegrassy, bouncy type deal. It's almost, I, I don't want to say happy. But it's yeah. more upbeat, I guess. I mean, with a, with a fucking mandolin all over this album, <laughs> it, it's hard not to feel like it's happy music. You got a good point there. You got a good point. I like just, the mandolin so much. I do too. I, I think it's the highlight of this album. <laughs> well, it's, there we go. It, it just it feels maybe out of place in in the context of the lyrics. Yeah. So the lyrics on this one, uh, it's kind of in several different places. 
It's more about the people kind of going about their everyday lives and just like kind of trying to ignore the shit that's going on around them just so they can live their own lives. Which, before I get into like protesting and just people being inconvenienced by protesting, Mm -hmm. I will say... I don't discredit anybody who's out there just trying to fucking live their life in in and amongst all of this crazy shit that's going on. Yeah. Like, the people who are just trying to, like, okay, man, in, I'm getting into work, I'm getting out, I'm gonna go home and fucking eat, eat a burger for dinner and hope, just hope that I can stave off depression for another day. Like, that's, that's totally fine, and nobody should be made to feel bad for not being in the cause, I don't think. But, I... I guess we all have our duty to at least try to better the world, but man, sometimes it's just so exhausting. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> when we get to the second verse where he's talking about um, protesters in the streets blocking off the streets and there's like cars commuting home and just honking and shit and being like, get the fuck out of the road. Like he, yeah. he's like talking about like, people rolling down their windows and screaming, get a boss, take a bath to all these protesters where he rolls down his windows and like blares the horn and it's just like pumps his fist. And he's like, yeah. And <laughs> that kind of, cause my thoughts on this have kind of changed several times throughout my life because I have been the person just trying to get home from whatever job I'm working mm-hmm. and shit's going down and i'm just like fuck man i I just want to leave yeah i just want to go home and i i have in the past gotten angry and been like what the fuck are you doing like it's not like people don't know that tyson products like (laughs) fucking like rape their chickens and keep them in tiny boxes and it's terrible but i just want to get home from my soul crushing job so i can have my soul a little bit less crushed but right and, and I, thinking, I, thinking about the mistreatment of animals in the food yeah. industry is not going to help that. Yeah, but that's the point. Yes. It's like, it's literally the entire point is to inconvenience people so that they are more apt to write their politicians who are probably not going to do anything, but yeah. maybe force the it, hand it's, of some It's politi- awareness, right? Yeah. Maybe force the hand of a politician who's like, shit, these roads have been blocked every day for a week, and maybe we should reconsider... Yeah. Not being such shit bags and actually working for the people that elected us. <laughs> yeah, because it's become this kind of it's almost like a hostage situation where pro is just like, look, we're we're not fucking moving until our conditions are met and these are what our conditions are and, and the people in power are like, Okay, well either we can ignore them for a certain amount of time, but there is a timer on that and once that time is up, like what the fuck do we do? And I ideally is like like you said they'll they'll kind of stop and and rethink something and at least try to please the people just to get them out of the streets which yeah. even if their heart's not in it as long as long as some progress is being made yeah. then that means the protest was effective right i'm at yeah it's like it's at the point where i don't give two shits if a ho- politician's heart is in something right if they if, 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 they... if bill gates <laughs> donates millions of dollars to people that need it and he's a terrible person that doesn't that doesn't mean that he's he's not still donating that money like that yeah. money is still being used in in great ways yeah i mean because you can just as easily be a shitbag and not help anybody but if right. you're being a shitbag <laughs> and helping people then Jeff at least Bezos. something's happening Fucking uh, Bezos. Fuck yeah. that guy. i mean i'm sure he, i'm sure he donates enough to get his tax deductions yeah yeah there but... we go he, he donates just enough to get his tax deductions and maybe maybe now that he's not running a tax haven for amazon because he's not the ceo <laughs> anymore maybe he'll like pay just a little taxes maybe he'll pay enough taxes to like fix a road or something nah that's not happening <laughs> but, jeff bezos doesn't care about roads he's going into space man <laughs> that's true that's that's what freaks me out dude all the fucking billionaires are going to spare yeah, space because they don't give two die. shits they're just they're just like whatever fucking peons yeah. Like, you can stay on this planet. I'll, I'll, live, I'll live on Mars, you know, whatever. Yeah. I don't care if I'm actively destroying the planet that you have to stay on. I can yeah. leave. Yeah. God it's fucking it. crazy. It's like children just playing with matches and just, just lighting shit on fire and not really giving a shit about what happens. Dude, track number four. 
children play with matches. Excellent yeah. <laughs> fucking segue. Because it, it that, worked. if that is not a direct comparison, I don't know what it is. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of... The, so this is, this, to me, I, it's hopping ahead to lyrics, it's kind of the opposite. In, in my opinion, where yeah. the, the, the song is kind of an insightful song. It's trying to incite people to go out and burn the old down and, and build something new. It's not necessarily from the perspective of telling the politicians to just burn the world and, and leave us behind kind of a thing. But Well, if we're on lyrics, I'm going to go ahead and say that there's like a little bit of this song that I kind of like, like, it's what I was saying that I kind of winced at. Yes. And this is this is one of the, the biggest complaints that I have. This song is one of my least favorite songs on the album. If not the least favorite, my least favorite. What was it for you? What do you mean? What what just the whole song? Oh yeah. I just okay. I don't know. The the lyrics just like I don't know. It the theming of it again, like he he's repeating children play with matches, start a fire over and over and over again. And his voice is already disagreeable. And he's, I don't know, like the context of the song. And then he, he starts screaming children lead us to the lake of fire and fire. And it, I don't know. It's just, this whole song feels weird to me. <laughs> See, I used to feel that way. And I don't know if it's just time has made me apathetic towards things, but it's it's by no means my favorite song on the album, but I don't have the same. I wouldn't say bad taste in my mouth because it's not like I never completely disliked the song or right. anything. But it's mainly how he, I guess, frames them as children. Like he's talking about us as children, which is kind of a comparison he makes later in a better way. Like yeah, the so... citizens being children and the politicians being parents or whatever. I wasn't sure if that was the intention or if it was just him trying to incite the younger generation mm-hmm. because I mean, maybe this is just because we came off of uh, green and gray by pile, which had this very like young and old aspect to them. It kind of, this, this came to me as, as more of like, he's getting older and he's not, he he's realizing that he, can't keep his own fires burning within him and so yeah. he's, he's encouraging the children to like look you guys disobey you know you guys go be disobedient you go burn down the fucking city or whatever because me is not enough i have failed our generation has failed to, to <laughs> come about change so so maybe the next generation will get get be able to fucking disestablish the the man i hope so that's what I hope for the next generation. Just <laughs> fuck the man. The part that mainly made me kind of cringe whenever I first started hearing this album was, uh, I don't know if it's like the chorus or whatever, but mm-hmm. it's the, well, the world is dry and brittle and dead. It'll go up in a flash if we mix it all together. Oh, what a colorful blast. Yeah. Only shout when spoken to, curse your way through church and school and mess around with father's power tools. Something about the way that he ends that on and mess around with father's power tools. I was always like, <laughs> eh. <laughs> There's a little bit of an icky vibe going on there. Yeah, and I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I just think, it, I, I don't know if it was supposed to be an innuendo necessarily but it It, it could be it's just something like and even if it's not it just like hit me as like too much of a something like kind of creepy yeah yeah, something like a 13 year old would say and just like just to get a rise out of somebody or just to kind of be on the edge or whatever and yeah the whole the whole this whole song feels very cheesy to me and just like i don't know it 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 feels forced and irritating in some ways and i don't know i don't like it well i don't like it i don't like it (laughs) <laughs> I don't like it. Well, musically, uh, it's kind of got that same bouncy type feel mm-hmm. that uh, "Give Me Coffee or Death" had, and I don't really know else know how else to describe it. Like, it still has the bouncy quality, but it's, it's a little quieter, I guess. And the vocals are really that. Maybe that's it. The vocals are like super the focus here. Yeah, it's, it kind of like I don't know. It felt like uh. Like he's singing in like a storytelling manner, like he's kind of like sitting around a campfire, like a summer camp, singing to the children. Yeah, at the camp. So it's got it's got kind of that like uh, campfire children song kind of vibe to it. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah. I I mean, I definitely... I don't mind at all the... In fact, I encourage, as I think I've said before, the incitement of a <laughs> healthy distrust of authority and a healthy right. rebellion against authority because we need that. And that that's a fine line that I try to walk as a parent because... I am the authority. Yeah. <laughs> and I very much dislike authority to a point that it has been my detriment for a lot of my life. Yeah. And I'm trying to figure out how to be respected as an authority figure, but you can. also well, and also teach her to not blatantly respect authority for no reason cuz that's right. that's the fucking killer. Is like you're always taught as a kid like oh that you always trust the cops or you always like parents and adults always asking like fuck yeah. they don't know what they're talking about in <laughs> fact most of the time the people who end up becoming authority figures are doing it for the absolute wrong reasons because they yeah, need to fill something them in themselves and that's don't teach children to blindly respect people that don't deserve <laughs> your respect like that's that's really where it comes down to and that yeah. I can definitely get, there will never be a moment in my life where I immediately respect someone due to their position. Like in, in fact, if that is demanded by somebody, I will respect you less oh, because for sure. you don't, nobody deserves any, any emotion towards them immediately. Like maybe yeah. if I hear of like somebody who, saved a bunch of children from a building or something like i'll immediately respect you but that's because of your actions that's not because of right. who you are i guess yeah i i don't know it's just thinking more about this song it's also kind of like hypocritical i suppose in in that like he he's encouraging anarchy obviously but calling talking to children whether it's a metaphor or not, like he he's kind of trying to brainwash a, the children, the younger generation to behave a certain way, which is kind of something that he also goes on a rant about later where he's, he's mocking the kind of brainwashing that the U S government and, and the schooling system and stuff is doing. So I, I don't know. It, it's, it feels kind of like he's, he's, he's maybe, blind to his own uh portion of of responsibility when he when he's trying to get somebody to think the way that he thinks but also criticizing other people for doing the same that's always been my main concern with like this line of thought is that yeah where does it end <laughs> and right not not saying like that's just a genuine question because if there is to be absolutely no authority who who in who there's always going to be yeah it's there's just, it's how society works and it's as much as i work. hate it like i try to treat stuff like this as more of a warning of what is already happening right. and an impetus to move towards a better version of authority maybe one where it's more spread out or it's not so harsh like there's not so much authority in the hands of a few Right. And maybe if we could all just be a little bit more responsible for everything that we do, <laughs> good luck instead with that. of yeah, well, instead of being like, oh, president, please, Save nine us. Supreme Court judges, please make all of our rules and please, like, yeah. how about just don't fucking do that? I would, I really wish there was a way to just be like, everybody, just mind your own fucking business. Don't, <laughs> yeah, don't be a dick bag. And that, then that would be a utopia that I would live in. But but then the problem is, some people's idea of minding their own business yes. is the exact opposite of that. Like yeah, it is because like some people, I'm gonna go on another rant, and I'm just gonna stop right no, here. No, I was I was about to. So go <laughs> okay. for it. It's just like there's some people that just feel like minding your own business is somehow has anything to do with any of anybody else. Like, I feel like this happens a lot in like religion where it's just like, you're so concerned about other people. Like it comes off as concern, but it's the literal last thing. It yeah. is not concern at all. It is just being a dick bag and trying to be controlling of other people because that that's where religion came from is trying to control right. other people. So it's just propagating that where it's like, and, and that's the thing they say, America land of the free, and religious freedom it's not 
it's, it's literally a just a Christian <laughs> theocracy where er, that's why they're fucking trying to repeal Roe versus Wade. They're trying to like ban abortion because mm-hmm. some people don't like it. And yeah. I'm not, God, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, what am I doing? On, <laughs> but, yeah. I mean, this album is, is definitely anti-America and I definitely agree with several aspects of it because it's, it's bullshit. But, but yeah, like, like you're saying, like, especially in the context of religion some people feel the need to quote unquote save other people that don't actually need saving you're you're fixing something that isn't broken you're intervening where people don't need you to intervene for the sake of your god or your your personal beliefs that's fucked up yeah because some people's idea of freedom is fucking trampling all over other people's freedom <laughs> like how does that make any sense? And yeah, then if you I'm try to free to call... you so that you can live the way exactly like I do. Yeah, that's freedom. <laughs> <laughs> and then they fucking, oh my, I'm just not, I'm just, I could, there's like 20 different tangents you can fucking go on here. That's, that's but, punk, man. But I'm just going to save that. I'm going to save a city by not just fucking going off. Nice. Track number and six, I... five. 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 I fucked up the count this time. <laughs> you did it. It, it was bound me. to happen. It was bound to happen. Track number five, Save a City. This this one kind of starts a bit slower with the acoustic guitar. The vocals come in kind of clean and, and a little bit distant, like it's kind of being recorded on a phone in somebody's room. And I actually like it. I, I kind of like the sound of that. Uh, as if the intro were the demo for the song, an electric guitar does come in with some kind of simple and, and sparse percussion and bass uh, behind it and the vocals gain some fidelity but it's still pretty slow in ballady uh, and there's also a pretty cool bluesy kind of rock solo section in this track that i really enjoy well cool so this this track isn't all bad huh yeah this this, this is kind of a, a slow there's a slow curve with this album for, for me so well that's it, cool. it gets a little bit better here during the middle section yeah i, I really like this song and uh yeah, it just sounds like a kind of slow building march where it's like got steady determined movement towards the end rather than some of the other songs where it's just like all energy all the time. This one kind of kind of moves forward rather than just has already arrived and is screaming. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, not not saying I don't like the already arrived and screaming, but I do. This is kind of just uh, it's, it's not, more, it has more of a progression. Yeah, and I like progress, and I like uh, singing along to this song, and yeah. just, man, like, lyrically, <laughs> I liked this song before I even knew what it was about, and whenever yeah. I learned what it was about, I didn't fucking believe it, and it's just, yeah, like, it's so... Kind of, it's kind of how I came into this as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, so, I'm guessing you also looked deeper into this song i did okay you you go for it because i've been i've just talked way too much on the last track so <laughs> i mean it's, it's your episode you can you can do whatever you want but yeah so on, on genius i did see there, there was a blurb uh that mentions that the song is talking about a, a bombing that happened in philly in in 1985 against the the move organization I suppose, uh, which was like a group of activists living in like, I, I don't know if they were living in a compound or, or something, or if it was just like, they were typically centralized in some aspect, but yeah, fucking the, the, the Philadelphia police force, I guess, uh, correct me if I'm wrong on any of the de- details. It's been a few days since I looked at it, but from what I remember, uh, the, the Philadelphia police force fucking like flew a, a bomb essentially over this, the center, this hub of the move uh, organization movement and just fucking dropped a bomb in the middle of their city to fucking deal with these people because they were, they were being in, insubordinate, right? They weren't complying. Yeah. So they're like, fuck it. We're just going to blow them up, I guess. Cause what else are we going to do? Like that? How it's fucked fuck, up? How unbelievable you see people like you, you look to places in like, or I guess you don't look the fucking American media tells you about places in the Middle East where we have fucking insurrected people. Right. And now this type of shit is happening over there. But if you just look over to Philly, the fucking city 
dropped a fucking airstrike on its citizens yeah. because they were insurrectionists because <laughs> they were labeled a terrorist group and just like how mind blowing that is 61 residential homes were completely burnt to the ground and it killed 11 people of their own citizens yeah. because they were trying to quell a black liberation movement and i mean i just i can't it's cannot, fucking wild yeah i cannot wrap my head around that and it's just like we were talking in the last track about like religion religion specifically which this doesn't really have anything to do with religion right but, uh trying to save people that you don't that yeah. don't need saving and the song is titled save a city in reference to the fact that they were literally i mean the the lyrics are save a city you burn it down to save a city burn it down yeah. and that's exactly what they were quote unquote trying to do i don't know what the fuck they were thinking but they yeah, just uh, it, t- it totally makes sense that he would sing about this right because he, he he grew up in philly and presumably he was like a kid when this happened at least the the song seems to imply that it kind of has like a document documentary kind of feel to it and yeah. that he he says when i was seven in suburban heaven and he, he was talking about how his experience witnessing this as a kid and and what all had happened around it and that they were telling him like look i mean sometimes to save the city you got to burn it down and and justifying it by saying that it makes perfect sense that he'd write about it and it probably had a huge role in forming his his worldview uh and his like anti-authority kind of views that he sings about along this album that i don't necessarily agree with but it makes perfect sense i could guarantee you i would be a fucking radical person <laughs> if uh if I Joey, saw... I think you're pretty rad. Well, thanks. <laughs> One last thing of note is I like how at the end, uh, he changes it to fuck the city, or so stand up to save your neighborhood, fuck the city, burn it down. Yeah. And it, where he flips it, and he's just like, is this what you want, city? Yeah. Yeah, we'll burn, fuck we'll Burn the whole fucking city down. <laughs> we'll burn it down. Yeah. And... I, I, I do like, there's a line uh, before that, point and he says so take heed if you live in the city in parts where the tourists won't tread kind of like saying look, look this this doesn't happen in rich nice neighborhoods yeah you're, you're only safe if you have money and if you're living anywhere outside of those confined lines they'll just fucking drop a bomb on you if they feel the need and then i'm rereading the lyrics as you say that and just the line above it where he's talking about uh just a neighbor <laughs> who was just like gone where, cause I read that they only gave like, they were like, yeah, you'll be able to come back to your house in 24 hours after mm-hmm. we do the deed, after we drop a fucking bomb on your neighborhood. <laughs> and they were just like, yeah, you can come back after 24 hours and talking about a lady who's like coming back to her house after a trip from the market, because the police told her she could come back after 24 hours. And they're just like, nah, dude, it's fucking burnt. We burnt it down yeah. to the ground. But you should feel blessed you live in the U.S. and not some other hellish place. And yeah, it's like, like that... what other hellish place would be worse than this? It's literally, it's... Like, you, like you were saying, like, in the Middle East, this is literally what was happening over there. And people are just, God, it's just, the brainwashing is so fucking real. Because yeah. they want you to believe that these problems are, like, just specific to other third world countries. We're a fucking third world country, dude. If that's, if that's <laughs> the, if that's the line you're drawing yeah. then we're behind that line, it's just insanity. Yeah. This, this country is not, uh, not all it's cracked up to be. I told you this was a fucking, <laughs> I told you this was going to be a short episode. Jeremy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was thinking about that, but I wasn't going to say it. I knew it wasn't going to be a short episode. I don't mind. We're, we're having good, meaningful discussion. Okay. I think. That's well, I, I extend my gratitude and thanks to you for not fucking blasting my ass about <laughs> taking 50 minutes to rage through five oh, songs. Not, not a problem, Joey, but we do got to move on to track number six. Gratitude and thanks. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. But this one, it starts out in a little bit of a more mellow place with some gentle sounding guitar. Kind of picks up that, that mandolin. Yeah. And I'm hoping it's a mandolin or else I'm going to look like yeah, I'm pretty. Idiot. It's got to be a mandolin. We both said it. Yeah, it's like I, f- I feel like it has to be. But uh, this one, it has a more hopeful feel to it. 
at least to me than some of the previous songs i mean it's titled gratitude and thanks so yeah but i mean the way he writes songs it could totally be like <laughs> okay have great. gratitude and thanks that the fucking that the u.s pigs... government was there to yeah. save you <laughs> yeah but yeah I don't, I don't know man it's 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 a little bit of some hope in the middle of the album yeah i i also don't have any real complaints with the music of this album of this this track it's it's i mean again like, like you kind of mentioned it it's it gets to a point in this album where there's not a whole lot new happening, but the mandolin's always nice. I'm down yeah. for it. So yeah. See, I had said it was going to be a short episode because the music doesn't change too much. And I was like, I will just breeze, <laughs> breeze through it. But you forgot that there's, there's another half of the show. And that's the lyrics. I that forgot will... that I get really fucking angry sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> but speaking of getting really fucking angry, uh, this one lyrically, it's kind of like a nice anti-war song uh, praising hippies of generations past that promoted like peace and love to end the wars instead of the quote unquote forced peace that comes from killing the other side, which I'm, I'm totally down for. I'm not, I would not consider myself a hippie, but I'm, I'm definitely on, on the, I'm le- leaning towards the full anti-war yeah. kind of aspect of this album. I feel like there is almost no situation in which war is the answer. Like, yeah. <laughs> like it's, I'm sure it happens, but I haven't seen it happen in my lifetime. And maybe, maybe if we're going back to like September 11th or something, mm-hmm. I don't know if a full war was justified, yeah. but the thing is, there's so much context that goes with it. Yes. Like, the fact that we fucking sold, like, armies worth of guns and stuff to the people that came back. Like, it's just, <laughs> what, like, how yeah. did you not, how did, how was this not forecasted? Yeah. How was this not, it's just, if we could just go back, like, a hundred years and just be like, look, don't fucking sell a bunch of armaments to uh, people who are trying to overthrow their own government mm-hmm. because what the fuck do you think is going to happen whenever they come in? Like yeah. they're, they're like, God, why? And, and I, I will admit that I'm fairly ignorant on, on the context and the details of a lot of that stuff. Cause I, I try not to, to get into that stuff. Cause I, I enjoy my, my peaceful, ignorant life. Sometimes ignorance is bliss, but th- you have to also kind of think like, fucking crashing a plane in into a, a trade center was probably not their first attempt. It was yeah. not, it was not their first step in their plan. Right. They, 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 wherever they're coming from, I'm sure that that was not like the first thing they thought of like, Hey, like we, if, if we want our change to happen, this is what we have to do. That was not step one that happened because their other steps had been ignored or had been, otherwise thwarted so yeah. like like you said like there's no way that there were not signs pointing to it happening and i know i know hindsight's 2020 20. yeah like, absolutely that, that's and to be in a position of where everybody's looking to you in that in a time like that yeah I'd, i don't know what the fuck i'd do but yeah and, and to be clear i'm not being a sympathist i'm, I'm not saying that they were justified in, in crashing planes into, into those buildings. I, I It's obviously a fucking horrible thing. Yeah. But there, that, that had, that was an escalation of something that had gone unanswered in my, in my mind. I, I just like, I mean, I'm, I'm not a scholar on this topic right. either. So I could potentially fly off the handle and say some dumb shit. But uh, I'll yeah. leave it at, <laughs> we are now 20 years later, and a similar group, like, it, nothing's changed. Yeah, it's, it's it's scary how little has changed. Yeah, and if anything, they're better equipped now, because we're fucking gone. We shouldn't have been there in the first place. At least yeah. shouldn't have set up a whole fucking army in the first <laughs> place, and had so many innocent decent people like because that's the thing if if you come away like i have nothing against 
soldiers, people in the army, like, mm-hmm. who are, and I know, like, to a certain degree, there's some sort of accountability there. Like, sure. you, you, you kind but, of know what you're signing up for in a way, but like, if you're, most people who go into it are doing it for completely noble reasons. Right. Like, and they're and, doing and it. The fucking, the government and the military camps at like, talk about brainwashing. Yeah. Like, yes, that happens with our media and, and that happens with our children and schools and stuff, but it's a whole nother fucking level in the military. Like, they have an they, esports team now. Yeah, they fucking it's it's fucking wild the the amount of time and effort that the military goes into breaking people down just to rebuild them to think a certain way. Well, and then like the whole we'll pay for your college because yeah. you know you're going to go into debt for the rest of your life if you, <laughs> if you don't go and fight. Like what? what yeah. Again, I have of- nothing against anybody who chooses to go in, into the armed services or anything. Like I I, I support that. I do not support the authority above that. I suppose. Yeah, I don't. I don't support the nasty practices that force people's hands or make them feel like they have to, or like it's just it's yeah. kind of it's grimy the way that a lot of people end up in it. And, and the, the marketing of it, it, just like everything, everything that goes into our military to like basically dupe people into giving their lives for a cause that they don't fully understand or that they can't even justify themselves. Like, or that they've just been straight up lied to about. Right. Like we can, <laughs> you can, the people in, in the power can tell you whatever they fucking want to. Cause yeah. nobody's going to call them on it. And if they do, you're going to be labeled a, you're going to be labeled a person of interest, a insurrectionist, a conspiracy theorist. You're going to be, You'll have a bomb Discredit. dropped on your house. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna have a fucking bomb dropped on your house. Like, God, <laughs> I'm doing it again, and I'm Look, just gonna... okay. We we love we love the troops. We we support the troops. We do not support the higher ups. So we we the song, and and the the theming and the topics get, just fills with both love and rage. Yeah, and uh, also track number eight fills me with love and rage because it's called love and rage. Nice and. It's a callback to a previous lyric from Thanks Bastards where he's talking about uh, the police officers being his love and rage all rolled up into one. Mm-hmm. The the feeling that you get where the love being the passion that you have for the forward movement, for the change, for the the protest, for the wanting a better future. But it comes from a place of anger because of the things that are happening. And yeah, I mean, if you want to change something, it's because you're mad at the way it is, but also because you love the way it could be. <laughs> yeah, kind of thing. yeah, and that's the thing. Like, that's where I feel sad for a lot of uh, patriots. That's not one of the things it's love and rage. There's no sad. Yeah, I guess that's true. <laughs> <laughs> but like, people who are so wrapped up in the idea of this false idea of America and yeah. wanting to go wanting to go back to the good old days or whatever, the non-existent good old days. And <laughs> yeah, the one uh, where we had slaves, right? Yeah. Either that or the one where uh, people just weren't treated as equals and were essentially still slaves, but just weren't called that and weren't technically owned by anybody. But, uh, <laughs> or, I mean, we could even hop into the modern slavery of the prison system, but you know, I digress. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, like it's just, you can get so swept up in an ideology and being told that that what the place you live is great and some people just can't handle finding out that that's not true some people don't want to believe it some people generally mm. like just genuinely don't see it somehow or because it doesn't affect them like yeah i mean ignorance is bliss and and there's there are, there are people that even subconsciously choose to ignore things like that where where they blind themselves to the truth just because it's easier to live that way. And I mean when you're just that person trying to get to and from work and you right. come home and you're passing like maybe your only interaction with people who have different thoughts or people who have not even different thoughts because maybe if you were in their position you'd think exactly the same but you're not in their position so you don't right. know where they're coming from and because that's the thing. It's like you see all these people who are less fortunate than you who have been completely fucked by the system, but you're like, I'm not being fucked by the system, so I don't see an issue. 
Right. And like I've never had to experience that confirmation so, bias and yeah. all sorts of other biases. And like every a lot of people have had hard lives and a lot of people have had harder lives than others, but mm-hmm. you only know your own experience unless you talk to people and some people take pride in how hard their lives have been or how hard they perceive their lives to have been so they can't accept that other people may not even be in a position to do like Hard work doesn't automatically pay off. It doesn't yeah. mean that anything's going to happen. It just depends yeah, you can't, on your You can't just tell a homeless guy to get a job and suddenly yeah. his, his life has changed and he, he gets it together. Because what's going to happen? He's going to go, he doesn't have, he, she, anybody doesn't they. have a, <laughs> they, they do not have a sink to wash their face in. I don't know. Or they're going to get fucking kicked out of a, pl- of a public place. Even if like, that's the crazy shit is like, you can try as hard as you can to do the right thing. And if you are not perceived as being a person that should be there, like if you're a homeless person that walks into McDonald's to try to maybe wash up your face so you don't look so dirty, maybe you got enough money that you're just buying, you're going to fucking buy a McFlurry because you know, you need that little bit of mental stability Mm -hmm. because you want something sweet in this otherwise sour world. (laughs) And people are like, get the fuck out of here. You don't belong here. It's like, yeah, like fuck i don't belong here like what are you talking about (laughs) exactly (laughs) it's fucking it's fucking depressing man fuck this album fuck you for making me (laughs) do this shit why we haven't even talked about the song yet (laughs) yeah oh my god dude okay so love and rage is about to me the camaraderie that you feel with other people who are kind of in the same movement as you who are uniting with the people around them to fight for a common cause for a better tomorrow. And more specifically, I feel the, the, the use of song to pass feelings and stories from generation to generation or from person to person and kind of unite them on a different level as well. I agree completely with what you said. I even, even apart from a lot of that context and like the, the, the roots of the song musically and stuff like the there was a line a couple lines that stood out to me he says and the the greatest of all historical shams is believing you cannot do something you can which like that's i think that's that's super inspirational like even outside of a context of a punk album and talking about the man because people are self-defeating just like if you get told something enough times which i guess isn't necessarily self-defeating but you start to believe it and if you tell yourself that you can't do something enough times, then then you won't be able to do it because you, your your heart's not in it, right? But yeah. literally, you're the only one holding yourself back. You can do whatever it is you think you can't, unless it's something that is physically impossible. Yeah, you can you can get yourself there. And hell, with with the human mind, maybe you can like if you want to fly. Maybe you can create extensions to your <laughs> arms if you're if you can think through it enough. I don't know. Just follow your dreams, people. Yeah, if you want to fly, figure figure it out so that the rest of us can fly too. Because yeah. I'm not putting my I'm not spending my energy on that. Yeah, me either. I don't I don't care enough to fly. Even if I could fly, I don't think I would. Why would I fly? I mean, like, it could be faster to get around than driving. Yeah, but I like driving. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> But yeah, musically, uh, because we kind of skipped over that for yeah. Love and Rage, uh, this one has kind of a, a southern blues intro with a couple of guitars. It's very minimal and kind of anthemic in some ways. Uh, there's an organ that comes in, which is kind of a nice change, uh, which makes it kind of stand out a little bit from prior tracks. And it, it, This song feels like something that would be a, a huge hit at like live shows with everyone just kind of like swaying and singing together. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely uh, what I I was going to make a note about that because so Eric Peterson uh, passed away in 2016. Uh, I don't know what happened. Not that it really matters, but uh, yeah, I think Wikipedia said that he took his own life. I would not doubt it. He's very uh, he's obviously a very passionate and just intense person who felt a lot. So yeah, it unfortunately a lot of uh and i mean especially if he was like grew up in an environment where the fucking authority is literally bombing its citizens like i mm. i that can't produce healthy thoughts but uh 
I got the chance to see them and oh really I didn't see them I left like I just we we went to in Bloomington uh is Planet X Fest Mm -hmm. and that Planet X is a record company that kind of does a lot of uh DIY punk stuff in this vein and went up there and got to see a bunch of cool stuff and ended up coming home early. And as we were driving away, I heard Eric Peterson singing. I can't remember exactly what song it was, but it was a song off of this album. And I was like, ah, yeah. like I wanted to go back, but we were already heading out like, and we just didn't. And that is one of my big regrets is not <laughs> getting to see this song live or just them live Yeah, because now I can't. So I mean, maybe you can. It just won't be the same. It won't be with Eric if it if it does happen. Yeah, or so, I could. I mean, I can watch YouTube videos. He's, there you go. He's got plenty of them out there. But on on a, on a sadder slash real well, not really sadder. On on the same note, I suppose. Uh, sadder than not being able to see a concert. <laughs> not not sadder than the reason. If you are considering suicide again, I'm trying to be better about this. Whenever we mention someone taking their own life, don't fucking do it. Yeah. Just, just fucking don't reach out to friends, to family, call the national suicide prevention lifeline. It's 1-800-273-8255. Don't fucking kill yourself because then the world doesn't get to experience you and you don't get to experience it. And you never know when shit's going to turn around. I mean, I thought that I was probably never going to realistically play guitar again and just recently picked it back up. And have started actually playing for the first time in literal years. Fuck yeah. And it's bringing me more joy than I thought. You never know when something like that's going to happen. It's going to be like, you. nothing can ever get better if you just end it. Which is something that... Yeah. You, I, so so don't end it on a low note. Exactly. End it on a high note. Fuck end it. On the highest but fucking no. note you can. <laughs> yeah, like... That at the end of your natural death yeah yeah don't don't be like well i have accomplished everything on my list I'm fucking gone well ho- hopefully by the time you get to that point then then you realize that it, it would be silly not yeah silly to end it but and you know if we make it to the top we can bring all our comrades with us as well so we can feel that unity if you just stay in there a little Hell bit yeah. longer and we can uh, we can all listen to track number eight all our comrades Boom, comrades. <laughs> this one has a drum intro. Hell even yeah, it if, even if it is kind of sloppy. That's, that's, my, <laughs> that's my thing. This album doesn't have a lot of drums. And when it does have drums, they're pretty sloppy and they're not great. But I, I kind of have to just take it at this point, I think. But that's just that's just how it is. Uh, this one leans into more of like the rock, the punk rock stylings with some fuzzy distortion on the guitars, especially in the chorus. There's kind of a cool breakdown section where the guitar sustains and fades out as this kind of driving acoustic guitar comes in, and then the song ends with this, this kind of satisfactory mm-hmm from, <laughs> from, from someone in the room. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of that, and I like it, where you can hear, like, people in the background, or just stuff happening, people, like, people talking. It's It feels very real, yeah. and I think that's what I like a lot about this. This is, listening to this type of music, it's not where I first started to feel it, but I, I very much have an, a th- a feeling of you don't have to do it well, just do it earnestly. And that's kind of what I like where we differ on some vocal stylings or on some types of music where I'm like, their, their voice kind of sucks, but they're totally into it. And that's (laughs) what I like about it. Yeah. I I respect that. That doesn't mean that I have to enjoy listening to it. Yeah. And I completely, understand the thought like <laughs> just hearing somebody go ah, all the comrade like, <laughs> <laughs> i don't mean to discount like that that was kind of tongue-in-cheek there yeah. but there's definitely people out there that like have a similar vibe to that that sounded more like i was going for like a molly hatchet type deal but anyways god damn it uh so all the comrades yeah it's uh kind of a little bit punkier like it's got more distortion in the Mm -hmm. guitar and it it ends on acoustic strumming so it ends in a less punky place but it's you can feel a little it feels more like you're listening to a punk rock song whenever you're listening to this one even though you can hear acoustic throughout yeah it's pretty pretty okay 
Well, and it's only two minutes long, so you didn't have to suffer that long. <laughs> I mean, I suffered through the whole album, so yeah, one short song is not, not saving it. Uh, lyrically, I, I'm not sure if I'm missing something in this one, but it, it just seems to, to be kind of acknowledging that good or evil, we're all, we're all people. We're all in this together. We're all, we're all living on the same earth. Yeah, I kind of took it as an extension of kind of the camaraderie talk of love and rage, but more extended to just people who want to help push the world in a better into a better place. I mean, better is subjective, I guess, but like the people who come together to try to make progress and those are your comrades, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not... Well, I don't know. Cause he even says like from the pawn to the rook, which I mean, I guess isn't necessarily saying from the poorest of poor to the richest of rich because they're, they're still the king above. So maybe this is being, it kind of, again, it hits almost like this weird hypocritical aspect of this album to me where he, he's, he's talking about this feeling of general unity and, and peace and love that, that comes in a lot of this and, and anti-war and stuff. But then he also off just as often sings about like, inciting riots and empowering people to burn down the establishment yeah. fuck the police and and saying like no nah, we're, we're all we're all people we're all we're all comrades we're all peaceful and we can we can exist in peace but fuck the police <laughs> kind of thing it just it just kind of rubs me the wrong way it yeah i mean i think that's where a lot of thought in people who think in this direction get a bad rap is from like i don't know just like the memes that i see from like <laughs> more conservative people are always like oh the fucking peaceful left at it yeah. throwing bricks through windows again and like it yeah there is a disconnect there but yeah and uh, i get like again i'm not i'm not anti-riot i just I, I feel like there's something that there needs to be consistency yeah and i feel like maybe it's just because in songwriting it's it's more extreme it's more hyperbole that it, it's harder to to find the nuance there of where that line is but i, I don't know it, it feels kind of wishy-washy and inconsistent to me to be singing about peace and unity and love and then also singing about killing people well i know the only consistent things in my life are coffee god and cigarettes so. <laughs> fucking nailed it except you don't smoke and you're not religious <laughs> I like coffee though. <laughs> you like coffee though. Track number nine, Coffee God and Cigarettes. I feel like this has to be your favorite song by them. Dude, I fucking love this song. It's <laughs> one of the first songs that I ever learned in like this genre on the guitar. Yeah. And I just love how it opens up with him messing up the song two times. Yeah. Like I know that that's, it's kind of, I guess, a cheesy thing at this point, but it's just, it adds to the do it yourself charm that I get from this album where it's like, you can hear him fuck up the intro twice and he's like Ugh! and then he plays it right. right which for all i know that's on purpose like he did that on purpose for the effect but it it, it he, makes me he choose of... to suspend that belief exactly <laughs> this is all in the ether this is all could be fictional i don't know it's just but it i like it yeah it's it's certainly a song i mean it's, it's another like, kind, of, <laughs> kind of like bedroom bedroom punk kind of kind of thing going on the the bridge is really nice i do like the bridge in the song it's got some some nice sounds in it and the end of the song i i'm curious how do you feel i don't like it i don't like it, the, the the inclusion of him him just saying like Haha, i'm going to hell for that one like i don't know it feels so cheesy and and so like almost forced in a way that like he, he's trying to Someone that's like trying to get to go to hell or or something and and being like ha which I granted again is kind of that that immature kind of naive aspect that I, that I pull from a lot of punk music in this vein is it it just it feels jarring to me. Yeah, that part I w it kind of for me goes against parts of what this song is even talking about. I think like him just adding that. Mm -hmm. like i get that it's like the punk ethos whatever it's like that's right. how how it is but the song itself is about alcoholism mm -hmm. and the fact that 
a lot of the programs, more specifically AA is what's kind of being referenced in this Alcoholics Anonymous, is most people are just replacing the alcohol addiction with another with, vice. With another vice, or several in this case, coffee god right. and cigarettes. Like, And the fact that he throws God in there, kind of like, I feel like it's weird that he would add a line at the end that's like, I'm going to hell for that one. Like, but, Well, I, I think that justifies it. I think because, I think it is like a tongue-in-cheek when he's referencing God, saying yeah. that like other people turn to God as, as their vice and, and kind of criticizing religion as an addiction of its own kind of a thing. So maybe that's why he felt the need to. Well, I will say after I have attended a few meetings and coffee, God and cigarettes are like the (laughs) staples. They are the (laughs) literal staples of an AA meeting. You go in there because God, I mean, religion, finding a higher power, I guess is what they say is part of it, but it's essentially find God. Yeah. And uh, they give out, as much coffee as you could possibly want and everybody takes a smoke break all like constantly throughout the meetings and that's kind of i don't know it's i like the message of it and that little thing at the end i think could be omitted and i would like the song (laughs) still i would still like the song very much yeah i think i I would like it more (laughs) honestly i I don't know it just felt felt weird felt like it, it didn't need to be there I don't do it whenever I'm playing my my great cover of this album. I also <laughs> but, don't do the messed up beginnings, but just like to be in the mind frame of someone that that does that. Like he records a song, he's like, "Ha I'm gonna pat myself on the back one and say I'm going to hell for that." Like it just feels weird to me. That's what gets me because I do like. So there's the album that I think we're going to do next week Mm -hmm. stuff like that but it happens but it feels more natural i guess like because this sounds semi-produced enough that you think of it sounds scripted (laughs) yeah like it sounds like it yeah like it's a thing like he put he put forethought into it yeah okay after i finish the song i'm gonna say this line (laughs) and you had to think to keep it in there yeah also like so even if it was spur of the moment I don't I don't know. It just seems very intentional. Yes. And but uh I like it whenever it's less intentional. I agree. Which I think is why I like the opening parts, but like I said, the opening parts could be scripted where he's messing it up and the end is kind of what makes me have that thought even. Everything but you know is a lie. It could be. It probably is. <laughs> but, well, you can keep on keep on dreaming, keep on thinking thinking the good thoughts about about rebellion and maybe you can have a, a rebel's romance with, with with your ideals with a full band even with a full band even <laughs> <laughs> track okay. number 10 so the one you were listening to so track number 10 a rebel's romance for this version of the album on spotify it says full band i think on bandcamp it says cd version because they record it with a full band was the version that you listened to, did it say full band after it, the title? It does. Yeah. Okay, cool. It, does, it doesn't say it on Genius, but I assume it's the only version at this point, right? Well, <laughs> they're uh, on Bandcamp, which is, I guess, where they... No, you know, Bandcamp wasn't even around in 2006, I don't think. Was it? Maybe? Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't I'm know. Not, I'm not going gonna to say it was. Well, I'm not either then. But uh, on, on Bandcamp, I think it just says CD version. But yeah, it has a full band. As the title states, even though the first verse is still mainly just acoustic guitar, it does eventually build to a band. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, so even before the first verse, it starts with this kind of like marching snare cadence kind of thing that comes back at the end. Uh, and then it kind of goes into the the slow ballady acoustic kind of track. Um, I, I still, at this point in my notes, I'm like, I still just can't get over how dramatic and exaggerated his harsh vocals are. Because it, it just, it irks me so much. But uh, yeah, the full band comes in. Like like you said, add some some depth to it, and then it ends with that kind of marching cadence, giving a kind of kind of almost somber, but not not super. Yeah, I I don't know what else to say about the music at this point. Honestly, I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there <laughs> because the music is not typically why I listen to like this. I do it to kind of. You're telling get, me you listen to music, not to listen to music. 
Yes, that is exactly <laughs> what I felt. That's why I listen to so much fucking stuff that Garbage. other people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, no joke. There's so much stuff that I listen to that I'm not afraid to show people, but it it would suck. You know they're not going to like it. Yeah, it would suck my enjoyment out of it in the moment because, like, there's nothing worse then not like this this right. is like this is pre-planned and it's like okay i you, you I have expectations you know I, you know generally what i like and what i don't like yeah but there's so many times where like i'm listening to something and i'm like you're excited about it yeah and then somebody comes along and they're like oh what is it and i know they won't like it but you sound <laughs> yeah. super pretentious if you're like oh you wouldn't like yeah. it or, but i say that anyways and they're like try me i like yeah, and then you and then you do and then they don't like it and they're yeah, like oh, and they're i told you <laughs> and, and it's not even that it's it's the sentence that's not even music and i'm like fuck <laughs> you, <it is." laughs> i'm not gonna go that far this is definitely still music it's just not uh it's not pop. A, monkey, a monkey hitting a tree with a coconut is music <laughs> if it's music like that the, it, has, it has to be rhythmic in, in some fashion it doesn't even have to be rhythmic I mean, it can just be noises and it Noises presented in a musical fashion is music. <laughs> okay. I, I think I can maybe agree with that. It's like... It's, I, I feel it's, like there, there are two aspects of music, and one is melody, and one is rhythm. And without those, you don't have music. It's all music. Everything is Everything music. Everything is music. Just wait till we drop our EP. We're going to do half of it, you <laughs> writing... Half of it, you writing the stuff, and half of it, me writing the stuff. Half of it... half of, Your half is going to be like, yeah... This jams, man, and my stuff is going to be like, okay, uh, it's been like three minutes since I last heard any noise at all. <laughs> What's the next thing coming? There's just there's, there's dripping water, and, and there's there's a howling in the distance, and there's a plate shattering. That's God. Joey's okay. experimental face. I feel like I'm leading us down too many alternate paths. Oh, it doesn't matter, man. Yeah, so this song, If again, you're listening, you're enjoying the conversation at this point, because we're almost at an hour and a half. Oh my fucking God. Okay, this song, it's talking again of people united through the struggle for forward progress and the strength that Bond can have or form. Like, I feel like it's about the strong friendships that are made through strife. Yeah, the camaraderie, again, with the comrades. Yeah, that makes sense. I w- this one, like, I don't know, musically, with within the musical context, it I wasn't really sure. It, it seemed like it was maybe a love song, but I couldn't nail down if it was about a specific person or if it was just about, you know, the idea of passion and endurance or, or if it was just he's talking about people that share the same views as him. But uh, yeah, pretty much, pretty much what you said makes sense. Yeah, there we go. So we can uh, go ahead and just dream of the morning whenever we Joe, don't have to joey's joey's struggling he's panicking he's like we're gonna get through this thing now man. we do too we, we can't have another neutral milk hotel <laughs> hey man i like that album so i love that album but pretty, two hour episode eh, well, no one listens to us anyways It'll be that's fine. that's true ben i'm sorry <laughs> we gotta talk to ben or one listener shout out to ben again <laughs> Oh we can't God. give him too much attention though, because he'll, he'll start milking it. You know, yeah, he'll start he'll, thinking that we're playing favorites or something. He'll start asking for a cut of that sweet ad <laughs> money. <laughs> <laughs> Track number eleven, the dreams of the morning. <laughs> what do you think about this song, Jeremy? This one, it, it starts with some happy mandolin. I, I, I used happy mandolin because again, it's, just, it's hard not to make a mandolin sound happy. I think, but uh, and the acoustic guitar is also there. It kicks into some ge- in, into gear with some pretty fast like acoustic riffage, and then it kicks into a higher gear when the whole band comes <laughs> in, and it feels more like the kind of like flogging mile, flogging mile, flogging, flogging Molly. Mile. God damn, my fucking brain <laughs> feels like a flogging Molly song more yeah. more so than the rest of this album. So I'm kind of more into it in that aspect. It's got a pretty fun solo, and then uh, like a, a final verse thing, and then it it slams the brakes and then goes into another like slowish acoustic section to end out the song so there's a lot, a lot of progression going on here i kind of enjoy it yeah yeah i really fucking like this song it's fun to sing along to it's kind of like <clears throat> i guess ballady in a way mm-hmm. at least at parts especially at the end where like you said it slows down and uh it's just fun it's <laughs> it's cool it sounds i love like irish punk and it has those vibes so yeah. super cool 
I, I have no clue what the song is about, so I'm glad that you said that you like singing. So maybe you'll have some some better insight into what it is. But it's a song seemed kind of all over the place to me, where like some parts it seems like he's just talking about wanting to live life to the fullest and not worry about the future and taking things one day at a time. And then other parts he seemed to be talking about future generations and maybe kind of going back to the the song telling telling children to burn the city down or whatever where he's kind of like encouraging them and, and maybe thinking that they should be more aggressive and choosing more war than peace. But again, that kind of seems extremely to go against like some of the more anti-war messages. So I was kind of, I was all over the place on this one. I didn't really know how to nail it down. See, th- I think the song kind of is over all over the place. And I think it is more highlighting a lot of the struggles that people go through to like put them into, I guess the punk mindset but uh, it's definitely, I think, at its core is just talking about the want, the the reason people are making a fuss and protesting and rioting is because they want better for yeah. the future. And like, I feel like that's this song at its core. But there's also, I don't know, like just the second half of, I guess, the second verse when they should have gone to war, mother cry and weep for your bright babe, father hold her through the reins, let the thieves not take her away from me and turn her to a slave of the trades. Like it's, it highlights the themes of just kids being signed away. Like they have parents, the every person who signs their life away because they were either manipulated by the government to be sent away. They have parents to every kid who is just lost to the grind, the fucking daily soul crushing grind to make a billion dollars for a, <laughs> whatever Jeff Bezos is out there while seeing literal pennies of it. And that's just like, I feel like it touches on the reasons that people are radicalized, the reasons that people adopted this mindset and talking about the main goal behind it of just to see a better tomorrow for future generations. And that, I don't that that line about uh, and to never look to tomorrow's rogues to say they went too yeah. far today, where it's talking, it's essentially egging people on to be like, no, you're not going too far. Like while it is a little hyperbolic, I think it's a line that I don't know. Don't judge people who are just doing what they have to do to survive. I guess is at the core of what it is. Just don't like, judge people. Yeah, don't judge people. Who are you? A judge? You're not a judge. Just let, let people fucking live their life, for better or worse. It's, maybe this is just me being too nihilistic. We're all going to fucking die anyway. Yeah. So, like, just let, let people be, even if it doesn't sit right with you or if they're doing something that you don't like. Like, it, it, there's no fucking point in any of this, so. Especially leave people alone that you don't like or <laughs> that are doing things you don't like. Why the fuck are you getting all in people's business if you don't like them or don't like what they're doing? Yeah, like, back to the only, religion thing. It's only making your life worse. And it's making their life worse. If you just stay out, you don't have to care about it because stop being a fucking nosy asshole. But you can't and... say that because it's, it's the whole punk ideal is, is bringing about change and you can't affect change if you don't get in other people's faces. Well, again, another hypocrisy of this album, you know, everybody just move out to the woods and never see another soul for the rest of your life. But that doesn't make people happy, Joey. Well, it makes some people happy. It does not make everybody happy. Well, fuck being happy. People people like socialization, I've heard. You're not going to be happy anyways. That's the secret. <laughs> well, you dropping real truth nuggets here on feedback if, loop. If, if your goal is to be happy, abandon all hope. <laughs> don't. Don't yeah, kill don't. yourself, at the very yeah. least. I am... I, I, he's I, memeing. He's being I a am, funny a funny guy. Not that funny. <laughs> but... I mean, I, I, we, got, we got some laughs out of it. Yeah, I, I we left. So <laughs> That's with all thoughts right. like that, how did I fucking get out alive <laughs> of my own head? <laughs> Check them twelve. How did I get out alive? Expert well, well, well. segue. Well, yeah. maybe not expert, but professional, perhaps. It's amateur because amateur. I'm not getting paid yeah. to do this. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yes, you are not getting paid, but I am. I'm keeping all of the money to myself. Well, that's fine, dude. Go buy a Snickers bar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't have money. We don't get paid. The This yeah. one, I, I really like the intro section of the song. It's got like a nice acoustic and then the electric guitar kind of comes in for some like an accompaniment, but it's not like prominent or anything. 
Um, but I, outside of that intro, I just I I'm not a fan of the direction that this album has taken towards the end. Where like I, I feel like a it, it this song feels like a song that a bunch of drunk people in a pub or par or, or a bar would be singing, just kind of like reminiscing of the old days and dreaming of actions that they'll never take. Just it has that kind of feeling to it. And the lyrics are kind of different from what what that is, but it's this song and the next song just kind of hit this weird spot for me that I don't like. Yeah, this song, I'll just go ahead and say, I feel like this could have easily been the end of the album, especially yeah. with the way it ends. Like, the next song isn't entirely necessary. I don't dislike the next song. I just, like... And I know this is just a collection of songs that was mm-hmm. thrown together, but, like... I feel like it has a very ending. It should be the end. But yeah. I'll that's I'm not the one who put this album together, so fuck what I think. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, so I do like the music. I like the theme of the song more where it's just talking about like the indoctrination of the American school system. Yeah. And I cuz that's a thing that I've thought about a lot mainly because I was brought up in a Catholic school Mm. and that's like indoctrination to the nth degree, but it's just nuts. Like talking about, uh, I don't know, like talking about teaching kids that they're free. You're not fucking free. This land was made for you and me. This land was not made for you and me. This land (laughs) was made for like five people and they have all the money and you're going to work for them for the rest of your life. And if you're lucky, you'll make above the average amount of money and be able to survive. And uh, it's, it's just all the lies that you get told when you're a kid that build into these expectations of what the world's going to be like. And you're taught to be patriotic. You're every day at school, you have to fucking put your hand over your heart and say the pledge of allegiance that they added under God to what the (laughs) fuck is that? Another, another thing. What this is supposed to be like, people like to say like America is the land of the free it's and not. They, they came here for like religious freedom. No, they came here so they could so that persecute. they could be free to, to yeah. do their religion and then persecute the other people that don't do that. And yeah. it's just so nuts that until like, I think it was like the fifties, they added under God in the pledge. And now people act like hell, like I know people who get like actually pissed that kids don't say under God and they're like, that's part of the pledge. It's like up until like 60 years ago, it fucking wasn't. So yeah. Calm the fuck down. Like, yeah. We shouldn't even like be, be saying angry. it. God damn it. We shouldn't even be saying it at school. Why does this matter? Why do we every day need to get up and fucking pledge our allegiance to a country that's going to crush us under its boot? Uh, because it's, 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 it's prop propaganda, you know, it's, it, it, we're, we're brainwashing our children into believing that the U S is the hero. America is the hero. And all of the history is written by us, but don't worry about that because we're being totally honest. Because that's it's it's bullshit. We teach children bullshit in in U.S. history classes, and we make them we make patriots out of people. Well, attempt to make patriots out of people yeah. and tell them that all of our wars were justified, and they're not, not at all. When in reality, America is just like out of all the countries. America is the person who would write this album. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely. It's it's just like, I don't know. I do. I like this album very much, but America is very much the edgy teenager. That's like, fuck you. I'm going to do just like, there's so many things that we do as a country that make absolutely no sense (laughs) until you frame it in the lens of (laughs) somebody just doing shit because they were told not to, or because not because everybody else is doing it. They're not going to do it. Yeah. Like how America's fucking... built on rebellion. You can't, you can't rebel against rebellion. Right. Cause that's the America's... order. And then, then punk that that's, we figured it out. We've cracked the code. <sighs> this is why they did it because now there can't be any true punks because there's, there's they can't rebel against rebellion because that's, that, that would bring order about and punks. It can't, you can't, can't do that. Well, all I know is one day, if I can make it out alive, I'm going to fucking move somewhere very far away. <laughs> <I'm gonna laughs> yeah. Move to a different country. We're, we're, like, we're, we're getting out, Joey. 
I'm going to take gotta... the midnight special all the way to Europe or something. <laughs> <laughs> 2002. 2002. <laughs> I got, only, I got only in 2002. <laughs> Track number 13, the midnight special, 2002. I really dislike this song. I This is not my favorite version of this song. I will go ahead and say that. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It's pretty unexciting musically. The per- There's a lot of like weird percussion that they use that to me is more irritating than interesting and if the last song was being sung by drunk people in a pub this one has that more kind of country feel so i said this one is is playing on a radio in some redneck's garage while he and his buddies drink and work on a truck and sing along because that's just musically like not lyrically but yeah but musically it's, it's what this song feels like to me and i i don't i don't jive with that musically yeah i like there is some weird percussion which in the context of the album, it's nice that things are getting mixed up, but musically, I think, cause I mean, this song it's at its core is like a traditional folk song. Mm-hmm. It's been originally not written, but popularized by lead belly, yep. an old folk blues musician, then even more so by Credence Clearwater revival. And it's, it's a song kind of like a prison song. Mm-hmm. And I do like I lyrically... prison. exactly <laughs> prison song. <laughs> uh, yeah, prison song is a very, very liberty taken reimagining of Midnight Special. There you go. That's your fun fact for the day. <laughs> but <laughs> this song is I like lyrically what he's doing because this song was originally written like the Midnight Special was a train, and there was like this myth that if the the train's light shone in on your set on your cell you were going to get like released to the next day and it's kind of this song i mean of course it's taken to the extreme where he's talking about the modern prison system and how absolutely fucking ass backwards it is (laughs) yeah but uh yeah i just kind of like that spin on it where it's like okay this was originally a prison song so we're going to write a song about modern day prisons and how how they're essentially just for-profit businesses that profit off of human suffering yep Yep, that's that that sums it up. <laughs> but yeah, it, it like I don't I don't know the the song he he's it's yeah what what you said I don't think I can really say anything that would add to it. He's just talking about rich politicians passing laws. I feel like there there was there was kind of more of a intentional shade on the people passing laws, and it, it's kind of highlighting the gap between the people that pass laws and the people that are affected by the laws yeah kind of thing where they're just they're locking up people just to to get them out of out of their world kind of a thing and, and they're treating the prisoners more like animals than people and which is pretty fucked up granted i i i don't think that our at least from what i've seen of u.s prisons they're not like they're not living in squalor <laughs> Right, maybe back in the day they they were worse, but like it, it's not like just the worst possible living condition. But how they're treated in there is the real the real issue. Yeah, nowadays anyway. I don't know, man. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, divulge been to prison. So I'm gonna. I've never been to prison. I'm gonna divulge some information that I didn't know if I was going to divulge today. But I had to spend a night in jail in the local. Mm-hmm. the local clink and uh i will say yeah they don't treat you good <laughs> yeah all i did was uh i got pulled over i wasn't under the influence or anything i got pulled over and i had a nominal amount of marijuana on me mm-hmm. and was uh instantly like dude brought the drug dog up when he came to see me he didn't even like come up yeah. and was like license and registration all that he just got straight to it so it took me down and uh essentially just like ber- like berated me the whole time verbally and then yeah, well threw threw me in a cell with like nine other people one of whom had syphilis and <laughs> the discharge was just it's happening gross. and it was just in a fucking kroger bag and they were just like yeah just keep doing that in that bag and just leave it in there and then <laughs> we kind of all just sat around and it was just like it's fucking awful you know, and it was just like they never I don't know. And I mean like I I'm not gonna sit here and act like you should be able to do some horrible shit and not have any repercussions happen. Right. But like 
God fucking damn it, dude. What the yeah, hell? Like, it's, that's it's not like, rehabilitation in any right. way. <laughs> there's there's that and it was is such a like a petty thing to throw you in a cell yeah. for. Like there if you're a serial killer, sure, absolutely. <laughs> Lock them up. If if you're fucking if you're peeing in public, maybe, maybe not. If if yeah. you're smoking some weed, maybe, maybe not. Maybe they don't need to throw you in prison, but that's how they make their money. That's how they justify again, it's it's the police justifying their their paycheck by yeah. arresting people for literally anything and i mean jail i guess isn't even the issue but there's so many people that get thrown into actual prison for shit like that and you're like right. what and, the f-? It, and it affects the rest of your life it's not like yeah. oh you're just serving your time it's like no you're gonna get out and then like we said with the homeless people where you're going into McDonald's and you have perfectly valid money, but they're turning you away because you don't belong here. You're going to then try to go get a job and they're going to be like, ah, you've been no. in <laughs> prison. No, we're not going to like, that's the thing. It's like you did your time and you're out now and you're still being punished for it and you're still being punished for it. And then you're going to turn into that homeless person who's right. then going to be rejected. And then it's going, there's people they don't have serially, nothing to lose. <laughs> yeah, they serial they serially commit crimes with the like specific purpose of going somewhere where they may be treated like shit, but at least they're gonna get a meal or yeah, like they'll have a roof over their head. Yeah, like they're not gonna have because that's the other thing. You can be homeless if you're gonna go sleep if you try to sleep under a bridge. You're gonna get the shit kicked out of you by cops mm-hmm. who are like fucking move, and then you go somewhere else. Like, that's just going to keep happening. And yeah. you're only getting maybe an hour of sleep at a time. Like, you wonder why some homeless people are fucking insane. It's probably because they yeah. get woken up constantly. They never get good sleep. They never get good food. They never get... Like, they're probably dehydrated. And they've just been fucking rammed into the ground by everybody around them. And have literally no chance. Like, yeah, it's just insanity. It's fucked up. We just discard people like trash but it's okay because we're in america you should be you should be thankful joey that you don't live in some hellish place <laughs> you don't live in some hellish place <laughs> oh god but yeah it's it definitely like it again the song to me it, it it's really highlighting that gap between the people that make the laws and the people that have to abide by them because they're just kind of they're kind of pedantic and and i guess even further between the people that enforce the laws and the people that have to abide by them because it, it's it's fucking ridiculous. Shit's gotten out of hand. Yep. Yes. I yeah. <laughs> Overall, for for this this album, this is a long episode. I'm not sorry yeah. for it. This was this was a fun discussion, at the very least. Uh, I, I feel like my biggest issue with this album, apart from the kind of like general punk cliches, is the the kind of contradictory nature that it, that I called about, where a lot of times he's talking like anti-war and anti aggressiveness and, and promoting peace and stuff and then also saying you know burn 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 down everything kind of thing which again maybe can be overlooked i suppose because it's it's songwriting and it's it's not necessarily literally calling somebody to burn something down but just i don't know the motives behind it and punk in general don't don't really vibe with me for a lot of the times uh, otherwise though the sound the music on the album is kind of hit and miss with me I don't think I'm going to be ripping back into this album anytime soon. But oh, come on, man. Now, now that I've expressed all of my dislike for this album, uh, what's the next stop on the on this journey that you're taking me on? I really wanted to go in a direction that would require us... I don't know. So the next, next week's album is going to be Knife Man by AJJ, formerly known as Andrew Jackson Jihad. Um... But yeah, that's going to be our album next week. And I'm going to save the other album because the other album is written by who I was talking about, where you can see progression Mm -hmm. in thoughts over a period of albums. So like we kind of have to do those albums, maybe not back to back in weeks, but I will be picking those albums in succession. Okay. So I'm I'm not going to. We'll figure figure the logistics out off of the podcast because you guys don't need to hear that shit. That's very true because we've already been talking for forever. So. We're hitting an hour and forty five minutes now. If you AJJ, guys, knife man, that's AJJ, it. knife man. If you guys have thoughts on uh, the punk of this album, if you have thoughts about the government, let us know. 
let us know if, if you disagree with what we're saying or if you just feel like we are horribly miseducated and, and misrepresenting some facts absolutely let us know I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say that i'm ignorant on a lot of things so if you have some insight that's useful let us know that's that's the that's the worst thing i can say on the internet yeah. just tell someone hey tell me i'm wrong because <laughs> about politics about politics <laughs> like, well yeah fucking do it fucking send us messages okay not messages maybe maybe don't blow us up per se but leave some comments tell us what you think about this album about the shit that we discussed and listen to ajj knife man uh because we'll be doing that this week and we'll come back next week and hopefully hopefully have a, an episode that's not nearly as long it should uh, be but... i'm not gonna i'm not gonna apologize for it that fun i hope you guys did too stay in our feedback loop bye, bye.